Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, we are going to be doing a project about a bird. I am a big bird lover. My name is Robin. That's my first name. And Robin is the type of bird. In my yard, I have a lot of different kinds of feeders. And one of the birds that comes to my yard a lot is a blue jay or a scrub jay. And he is a beautiful, magnificent blue color. So that's the inspiration for my bird. But you can make your bird any color you'd like. So in some of the pictures, we will be doing a fall theme, and these leaves have been falling from the trees, but here in Southern California, it is 85 to 90 degrees. It doesn't feel like fall, but nature knows it's fall, and the leaves are starting to change and fall around my yard. So let's get ready to do our art project. I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Welcome back. We gathered all the things that you need today. We need some paper. And I'm using the paper that comes out of the printer, so it's nice and thin. We need a sharp marker. And at the marker, I want you to make sure your cap is the one with the rounded top and the rounded bottom. We also need a pencil, an eraser, and something to color with. Um, they need to be crayons today. We can't use markers or colored pencils. You have to use crayons for this lesson. So your crayons, I put mine in a cup. They're easier to find that way, but you can leave them just kind of sticking out of the box if you want to like this. These are my jumbo crayons. All right, let's go. Let's begin. So we're gonna make sure our paper is horizontal today. Horizontal means long. We're gonna take uh, our paper, and normally I ask you to have a couple extra sheets underneath, and today I just need one piece of paper to start with. We can put the extra sheets under later. We're gonna take our paper and fold it in half. So when we fold it today, I need you to fold it from the left side over to the right side, and I want you to leave it on the table. Don't pick it up, just leave it right on the table, and you're gonna pick up the left side, pull it over to the right side, line it up, Hold your fingers down on it, and then I just take my first finger and I slide it down right here to the middle till it pops right there. And then I can slide it up and slide it down. Once my paper's folded in half, I rub my finger over the seam, open it up. And now we're ready to draw our bluebird. So I'm gonna show you my little bluebird on this side. He's in the day, daylight, and in this side, it's nighttime, and he's getting sleepy. So we're gonna draw our bird right now on the left side first. So all we need right now is a pencil and an eraser. So the first thing is to find the center of this section of our paper with our finger. Make a dot, like we always do. And we're gonna begin by making his beak. Now his beak is going to be big enough that whole finger can fit inside, nice and comfortable. So I'm gonna start by taking my pencil and right above that dot, I'm gonna make a big, long curve, big enough that my whole finger, when I set it on top, I can see the pencil line coming out of both sides of my finger. Now underneath that dot, I'm gonna make the letter V. I'm gonna take my eraser and erase the dot. And the next thing we're gonna draw are his gigantic eyes. So if you look at his eyes, they almost look like the shape of an egg. They're a big oval shape. So I'm gonna start by drawing a line right here in the middle of his beak, right at the top, to start his eye. It's gonna be pretty big. I want a big, big eye. And then I'm gonna draw a rounded circle that comes around and back under, and it ends kind of halfway up the beak. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now, as I'm drawing my second eye, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna try my very best to try to make it about the same size as the other eye, but you'll see when I'm done, they're never exactly the same. This is where I go back and I just kind of fix it, kind of correct it, and then I look at it again. They don't have to be perfect, but something that you're happy with. I'm gonna erase the pencil line that I don't wanna keep anymore. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw some feathers on top of his head. I'm gonna start right here at the top of his head. I'm gonna make a nice, big, tall loop. And I'm gonna make one shorter loop on this side. I'm gonna match it on this side. 
And then I'm going to add another little feather on this side and this side. All right, let's look back at our picture. Now look at how short his body is. I want to make sure that I draw this bottom of his stomach kind of close to the bottom of his beak. I don't want him necessarily really tall. I kind of want him short. So right about here, I'm just going to look underneath his beak. I'm going to come down and make a dot, kind of how fat I want his body. And then I'm going to start over here on this side, and I'm going to make a little line. This is where his wings are going to be. And I'm going to make one on the other side. And all I have to do now is just connect it with a curve, like a half of a circle. Now draw this line light because we're going to change it in just a minute. Now the next thing we're going to do is add a wing on this side. So I'm going to bring a line coming out from this side and a line coming out from this side, not very long. And then I'm just going to round it around at the end and bring it back. And bring it back. I think this wing is shorter than this one. Do you think I should make it longer? Maybe make it a little bit longer. I'm going to erase the line I don't want. All right. Next, we're going to give him some feathers. Now, to make his feathers, we're just going to make the letter U. So I'm going to start right here underneath and make a big, fat letter U, big enough that I could put my finger in. And then I'm going to continue making the letter U, nice, big, fat ones that I can put my finger in. And I'm going to go about halfway up his body, but I'm going to stop before I get up here where his shoulder is. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And stop. And then I'm going to get my eraser. And I'm going to erase the line where his shoulder is. I don't need that little part of his stomach to come up and touch his shoulder. So I'm just going to erase that part right there. I'm going to erase my pencil lines that I don't want anymore. And then we're not going to give him any eyes right now. We will later. We're going to give him two legs coming down. Now, I'm not going to make his legs too long because I want to save room for a branch. I'm going to give him some toes. I'm going to give him three toes. I'm just kind of making like an upside down U or a rainbow shape with one middle toe. And then I'm just going to curve a little branch from the side of the paper here. I'm going to draw it right through his foot and stop it about a finger away from the middle here. And I'm going to draw another line next to it. And this time, as I get closer to the end, I'm going to make it come to a point. To make another branch, I'm just going to make another line that comes up. And I'm going to make that one come to a point, too. Now, for a leaf, I'm just going to draw a long curve, like I'm making the letter C, but kind of a long C. I'm going to match it on the other side. It's going to make a football shape. And a line down the middle. I'm going to draw one more down here. Same way. All right. We are done with our drawing. We don't need to draw anything else right now. We're going to finish drawing it later after we do some crayon work. So I'm going to move my picture over just a minute. And I'm going to get my first crayon color out of my cup. So the first color I want to look for in my crayon cup is blue. So I'm going to find my blue crayon, and I'm going to outline the top of his head. Now look what I'm doing. I'm not coloring it in. I'm just going over each one of those lines. Now once I go over them one time and I'm pressing kind of hard, you want to really make sure you're getting some good dark crayon there. So once I go over it once, I'm going to go over it a second time. So two times over every line. So that's two times. Now I'm going to trace his shoulders. 
on the other shoulder. And then I'm going to do it again. Every line twice. And I'm going to trace the bottom of his wing once and the bottom of his wing twice. And then I'm going to do the other side one, twice. It's really important that you press kind of hard with your crayon so that later it's going to show up. And you'll see why in just a few minutes. Now I'm going to start to go around his body. And you'll notice I go once, twice on every letter U. Once, twice, once, twice. And I'm pushing once, twice, once, twice. Sometimes my crayons break when I'm pushing hard. Does that ever happen to you? If it does, don't worry. Just pick up the broken piece and keep drawing. When you're done tracing the body and the top, we're going to stop with the blue and put the blue back in our cup. And the next color we're going to look for is orange. So look for an orange crayon. You might have a light orange or a dark orange. It's up to you which one you want to use. And you're going to trace the beak. Now we're not coloring anything in today. We're just tracing it for now. When you're all finished with your orange, go ahead and put that color back. And the next color I want you to look for is brown for our branch. Now we're going to trace the line of the branch, but once again, we're not going to color it in. Now that's one time. I have to go over that line a second time. Now I keep my fingers down here at the bottom of the paper. It kind of helps my paper not to wrinkle because I'm pressing kind of hard with my crayon. Now you don't need to color the branch in. We're just outlining it. And I'm going to do the short little branch up here. I almost forgot that little guy. I'm going to go over my line a second time. And then I'm going to look for a green crayon. Now you might have a light green in your box, but save that one for later. I want you to use the, the green that's a little darker. And we're going to outline our leaf. And then I'm going to go over my leaf a second time. Every line two times. And when I'm done with my leaf, I'm going to put my green back. And now I'm going to get my black crayon for my final color. I'm going to trace over my legs once, twice, and my feet. And then I'm going to trace the two round ovals or circle shapes for the eyes once. Once, twice. All right, we are done. Now, I know you're thinking, what, Mrs. Torres, that does not look anything like the bird in the picture. Don't worry, it will later. Okay, so now, before we begin, just very softly brush any of those loose crumbs. Every once in a while, I'll get a little crumb that sticks to the paper and I can't get it off. It's okay. Okay, here we go. We're gonna take this piece of paper, we're gonna very carefully refold it. So we wanna make sure the bird is on the left side because when we fold our paper closed, we want this image to be on the top. So I'm gonna refold it back like this. And now we're going to, can you see my bird through the paper? That's excellent. You wanna be able to kind of see your bird through the paper, especially if you use thin paper, which I told you in the beginning, we want to use kind of the paper that comes out of the printer because it's a little thinner. Now we're gonna use our Sharpie marker, but don't bother opening your marker because we're not gonna actually use the marker we, the way we normally do. We're gonna use the back of the marker right here, and we're gonna be using it as a tool to rub our paper. And that technique is called burnishing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our hand, it's not holding our marker flat on the paper like this. And we're gonna use the back of the marker that has the rounded end like this. And we're going to start to press down and scribble with our muscles, not so hard that you wrinkle your paper. You notice me keeping it right in the crook of my hand in the duck's mouth section. Remember I taught you that that's the duck's mouth. And then as you're scribbling, if you very carefully lift up the paper, you can 
see our crayon is transferring to the other side. That's how we're going to get our second bird. Now I'm going to hold my hand flat like this. I'm going to keep scribbling, scribbling around his eye. I can see his eye through the paper. Scribble around his beak. Don't forget that middle section. I'm going to hold my hand very carefully and peek. Yep, it's working. Now I'm going to go down and scribble his wing, his other wing, and the side of his body. And especially when we get to the edge of the paper here and here, you really want to make sure your hand is protecting the page from wrinkling. And you'll notice I'm not scribbling the whole paper because I can see where my drawing is, but if your paper is a little thicker and you're not able to see through it, you know the bird is in the center of your paper. Just scribble all through the center. And then you can open it up carefully and see what you missed. So moving down to the branch and leaves and his legs and feet. And you have to be super careful over here because this part right here wrinkles really easy. When I'm done, I'm going to carefully open my paper. I can always close it back up if I missed a section, but most of the time you can kind of guess. Like you see how I can't see the branch right there? I can close it up and re-scribble it. Or I can just fake it later. All right, open up the picture. Now you have one bird that's bright and one bird that's more dull. So now we're just gonna go back and retrace our lines, the same colors that we did originally on our picture earlier. So we're gonna go back and retrace everything using our crayon. So now I'm switching colors. I retraced my leaves and now I'm going to trace over my branch. And you want your lines on this side to match your lines on this side. So as you're tracing them, go over your lines two times so that they match your original drawing. When I'm finished with my brown, I'm going to go in and do my feet and legs. And carefully, so I'm going to rest my hand up here, carefully trace my eyes. Take your time on the eye. My first time around, and then the second time around. And then I'm going to trace with my orange crayon the beak. See if I missed anything. Did I miss anything? I think they look pretty similar. So now we're going to go in and we're going to draw the expressions on our birds. And we're also going to draw the image in the background. So for our first bird, we're going to give him two black eyes. And you can decide where you want your bird to be looking. I'm having my bird look forward, but you could have your bird looking up or down. I'm going to use my black crayon. I don't need to use a pencil for this, and I'm going to be drawing a big, long oval. Now, inside that oval, to get my shiny light, I'm just going to draw the letter U at the top, leaving a fairly big space up at the top. And I can take my crayon and color it in. Now the eye on the other side of the picture where the bird is getting ready for nighttime, I'm gonna change it. So I'm only drawing the eyes on this side for now. Now for this side of the bird, 
I'm going to go in first and I'm going to trace a line that goes across both eyes. One continuous line, unless of course you separated your eyes, but I, my eyes are touching. So I'm gonna draw one line across for his eyelid. So when we get tired, our eyelids get heavy. So I'm gonna kind of go right through the middle. You can do it straight or you can give it a tiny bit of a curve. Go over that two times. And on this eye, let me put my picture here so you can see, we would not be able to see the shiny light in his eye, so I'm only going to be drawing half of his eye. And then half of the circle. And then we color it in. And then this will be colored blue because that will be the same color as the bird. That's part of the bird. All right, so now our drawing part of that is done. Next, we're going to come up here to the top corner. This is where our moon is going to go. So I'm going to use yellow crayon. So I have two different yellows in my box. I'm going to use this kind of golden yellow to draw. And I'm just going to draw a long curved letter C. This is going to be the inside shape of the moon. And then the outside shape, I'm just going to connect it and bring it back around. Now, if you make it too skinny, let's say you made it that skinny, it doesn't matter. You're going to make it filled in with yellow later anyway. So just make it as fat as you want it to be and color it in with a nice bright yellow. So this is my golden yellow, but I also have this bright yellow that's kind of more like a lemon yellow. And so I'm going to color both colors of yellow together. On this side of the picture, this is where our sun is going to go. So in my sun, I outlined it with orange. So I'm going to draw it first and then I can outline it later. So I'm just going to use my golden yellow and I'm just going to draw a half of a curve here. And then I'm just going to color it in all the way to the corners. And we blend the two yellows together. I like to mix the two. And then for the rays of the sun, I just took my yellow and I just made a big kind of a block of color like this, like a big rectangle. I can outline it later. Now you don't have to do it this way. You could make it just kind of scribble scrabbling like this if you wanted to. So then, once I'm done with that, I'm going to take my yellow and color the inside of the beaks with the yellow. Either yellow will work. Now, I know we outlined the bird's beak in orange, and the only reason I did that is if I would have outlined the beak in black, when I went to color it right now, the black, you can see it kind of gets kind of smudgy. If there's any black on your crayon, it smudges. So the first couple times I was kind of practicing this and figuring out how I was going to draw this picture, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just kind of having fun. And I did it in black, and then I didn't like the way the black smeared into the beak. So I think orange works better. We can always re-outline it in black later if you want to. All right, when you're done with that, then everything else is pretty simple for coloring. I'm going to leave that part up to you for coloring, and I'm going to show you how I colored mine. So for my bird, I colored my bird blue. You want the bird to be the same color. So if you decide to do a red bird, you could do a red bird or a purple bird. I just have them outlined in blue, and then I colored them all in with blue crayon, and then I outlined him in black to make him show up. And I also want to show you that here on his eyelids, I did that in blue as well, because that is a part of the bird. And then up in the sky, you'll notice that I colored the moon um, with a black outline. And then for my sky, I used my black crayon. Now, when you're coloring your sky or coloring your bird, you want to always make sure you're trying to color as best as you can in one direction. So this is where I would take extra paper and put it underneath like this. That way if there's any grooves in your T 
table. You can see I have a wood table here and this groove would end up getting on my bird. So I always stack a bunch of papers underneath. I'm putting a green paper under here just so you can see the drawing a little clearer. And then when I'm coloring, um, this is a great time if you have broken crayons at home. You know, you can use the side of the crayon to color a little faster. So all you're going to do is when you're coloring, I outline it darker first. I turn my paper. I'm more comfortable doing that. And then you're just going to color like this all the way across your paper until your picture's all filled in. Now, if you're doing sky black, you're going to notice that I really was careful in coloring all the same direction on my paper. I colored the other side of my sky blue for my daytime bird. I outlined my uh, sun with orange, but you could also outline everything in black, just like how I did my moon. I'll leave that part up to you. So I hope you had fun doing our little 